my name is Empty Without Brain. This will be a continuation of my recent response video, which will be hitting upon more sensitive issues regarding Sean's recent responses to people portraying him as a supporter of the Holocaust. The content of this video will also involve a lot of swearing, so if you're offended, I really don't care. However, I would like to make just one final point clear by continuing the analogy I brought up in the end of the last video where I gave reference to Lord Alan Sugar on The Apprentice. In the show, all of the entrepreneurs in the final had to explain their business plans and depict how they work. They needed to explain their methodology and give references to its previous success and how it would work with more support. In the debate, I described a humanist secular society giving reference to an atheist worldview as a vision where I stated how everyone's equality can be promoted through the human rights, acting as a guide to help build cooperation. I explained how the study of ethics can evaluate the proposed values and decisions through public spheres to determine its impact upon society as a whole. My arguments explained the importance of values and how they could be supported by creating principles and laws. For example, by making murder illegal promotes the value of life. With a person being alive, they can do more to cooperate and provide services to help and aid people in a society. For example, the National Health Service in the United Kingdom provides aid to children suffering from illnesses such as cancer, leukemia, meningitis and more. The nurses, the doctors, the radiographers and everyone who works with them come from all sorts of backgrounds, races, religions, origins and ethnicities. As I mentioned to Sean, the last time there was a Christian dominant society in France, they segregated and ostracized everyone who did not share their particular beliefs. They were used in the slave trade to promote pure capitalism, which acted as evidence of his proposed mechanism's failure. I used this argument in the debate. However, Sean called this an ad hominem attack. Here is the definition of ad hominem for you, Sean. An argument from reaction arising from or appealing to the emotions and not reason or logic, or attacking an opponent's motives or character rather than the policy or position they maintain. My argument was certainly not an ad hominem attack, it was an argument from evidence. Now, I have no doubt if he was ever on The Apprentice he would inflate his ego as if there was no tomorrow. However, that is what I love about Lord Alan Sugar. He would quite happily slap him down to earth and make him feel like shit after hearing his bullshit. Sugar just basically wants to hear three valid components to the proposed mechanism. The idea, the methodology and the result. The idea of a humanist secular society gave reference to my view of promoting everyone's equality and human rights. My mechanism explained the methodology of how proposed values could be evaluated through the study of ethics and by giving reference to the United Kingdom acted as an example of the mechanism's success. I also gave reference to the prisoner's dilemma to test my mechanism where it explained how if everyone were to cooperate together they would get the best total outcome. Sean explained his beliefs in his religion were due to God apparently revealing himself to him which he could not prove. I challenged this, however he kept insisting it was like saying 2 plus 2 equals 5, which was a really bad analogy. The existence of a god is entirely different from the model of mathematics. He depicted an atheist worldview as someone who was immoral or, as he put it, someone who does not know right from wrong, which was an ad hominem attack, completely misrepresenting what I had just said. So, thank you for not only contradicting yourself, Sean, but making yourself look like a complete fool. Yes, and the result of your proposed mechanism to get people into heaven could not only get Adolf Hitler into heaven, but not have the foggiest idea whether it gets anybody into heaven. Apparently, according to you, we are all condemned to have cancer, AIDS, poverty, natural disasters, murder, rape and burn in hell just because a man ate a fucking apple. I think Lord Alan Sugar would cringe in disbelief at how completely batshit fucking crazy this idea is. No worries, Sean. I'm sure Eric has no doubt licked your wounds after you raged quit from the debate. 
All right, hold on a second. I'm going to invite Eric Hovind just to uh, listen to the debate he wants to listen. I'm not saying my mechanism was perfect, but let's say it's a bit more realistic than yours. And I think we can effectively establish from the poll, Sean, you failed. And you agree to the judging terms so you can quit shitting on the chessboard. Let's move on to a more sensitive topic regarding Sean claiming he didn't say the Jews deserved the Holocaust. You may not have used the phrase word for word, however you have certainly implied it. And if you dare deny it, you can give reference to a well-documented account of your history. Especially the video you had recently deleted, where you claimed... The only explanation, the only possible explanation is they were under the cursings of Deuteronomy 28. Now, the question is why? Why, why, why? Well, we know they were expelled from the land as Deuteronomy 28 predicted would happen if they ever broke favor with God because they rejected Christ. It happened in the very century of Christ's crucifixion. That must be appreciated. You need to understand that they were in the land and then expelled from it in the very century that Jesus was crucified. Smite the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. This is what the Jewish scriptures foretold. So why did the Holocaust happen? The only explanation is because they were out of favor with God. And why? Because they rejected the Messiah. That is the equivalent of the police force saying, unless you worship us, you will never be under our protection and will deserve to be raped, murdered, tortured, and more. To put it quite bluntly, Sean, you have certainly said how the Jews deserved the Holocaust. He then moves on to what atheists deserve. This is, of course, the activity of atheists. It's not that they're concerned that I said Jews deserve the Holocaust, because I never said that. So that's not what they're upset about. What they're upset about is I'm a Christian, and they hate God. They hate the Gospel, and they hate Christians, which is, of course, what the Bible said. And so, let's stop talking about what the Jews deserve, and let's now talk about what the atheists deserve. The Bible says, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and the wages of sin is death. Atheists and all of humanity deserve to die and go to hell for their sins against God. And there is no name under heaven by which man must be saved other than Jesus Christ. Anyone, Jew or Gentile, who rejects Jesus Christ will come under the cursings of God, both in this life, but more specifically, in the hereafter. You will go to hell when you die. That is what you deserve. And so, I implore you, please, implore you, please, put your faith in Jesus Christ, or you will suffer the wrath of God. And the wrath of God, quite distinct from the wrath of man, will make the Holocaust and the tortures and injustices that the Jews suffered seem like child's play compared to the fate that awaits you if you have sinned against the eternal and holy God of the universe. And so, put your faith in Jesus Christ, stop slandering him, stop slandering Christians, Stop frustrating the purposes of God, or you will suffer precisely what you deserve. As you have just heard, Sean believes all atheists hate Christians. Well, I can tell you now, Sean. I do not speak for all atheists, however, I can certainly tell you it isn't Christians I hate, but reckless, spineless fuckwits who feel they can impose their way of life above everyone else's and not give two thoughts for opposing views. For example, you. It's not because you're a Christian, but because you're an obnoxious asshole. In his next statement, he described how hell would make the Holocaust look like child's play. Apparently he has weighed up and compared the terrors the victims of the Holocaust had endured in the gas chambers and concentration camps to his small-minded view of hell and he dares to call the Holocaust child's play. Sean, you have not even stubbed your toe by comparison to the vast majority of people you have encountered in your life, let alone the people who have suffered from the Holocaust. So to make such a retarded statement, like you know how pain feels, I can make an accurate comparison really does demonstrate how much of an insensitive, spineless little fuckwit you are and you have the downright nerve to call atheists immoral? Are you fucking kidding me? But I was reassured to hear 
how you no longer have control of the content you portray on your YouTube channel. I was informed of this by Nickel SD. Make sure to subscribe to him, he makes really interesting videos. I was once in support of you being removed from their campaign, but the thought of someone keeping you muzzled and restrained from saying what you want really does make me feel much better. Jews for Jesus officially have you on a leash. You now merely act as a powerless puppet that only gets to say what they want you to say, whether you agree with it or not. Otherwise, well, you're back to working in the bingo hall. So, either way, you lose.